Hey guys, I get asked quite frequently in the comment section of the review videos of these lithium iron phosphate batteries whether or not some of these batteries can be used as a suitable replacement for the lead acid battery in a uh, typical car. And the answer to that, simply put, is just no. These batteries are not built to be a car battery. But why not? It's a standard 12 volt battery, right? And the uh, and the charge and discharge parameters of these batteries are very similar to lead acid. Now, these lithium iron phosphate cells are very, very powerful. They have very low internal resistance. So I have no doubt whatsoever that these can probably start your car over and over and over and over again. The problem is not the battery cells themselves. Uh, so let's just talk about how the battery works in your car. Uh, so you have a 12 volt lead acid battery. So when you turn that key to start, your battery releases a very, very large, it can be hundreds of amps of current to your starter to start the engine. And that only lasts for a second or two. After that, the engine engages the alternator and the alternator begins charging. Now in a standard alternator, there are no magnets. It can't charge on its own. So if you take the alternator and simply spin it, it's not going to work. You have to have 12 volts applied from the battery to the field coil on the alternator to get output from that alternator. The problem is that these batteries have an internal BMS or a battery management system. That BMS is constantly monitoring parameters of the batteries, whether it be temperature, voltage of the cells, voltage of the packs as a whole, discharge, charge current, things like that to determine whether or not this battery is operating at a safe state. If it detects any of those parameters that are out of specification for what that BMS is programmed for, it will completely shut down that battery. Now, some of them can shut the charging and the discharging off separately. A properly designed BMS will do just that. So that's one concern is that the BMS in the battery will shut the battery off while the car is running. The second problem is that the instantaneous power that one of these batteries is going to push to start your car engine could be hundreds of amps, up to a thousand amps for larger trucks and whatnot. The way the BMSs work is that they have FETs or field effect transistors that that power flows through and those FETs act as the switch. So the BMS is controlling those transistors as switches to determine whether or not this battery shuts off as I've mentioned earlier. So one of the biggest risks is you can actually blow out those FET transistors in the BMS if those transistors are not designed to handle hundreds up to a thousand amps. And many of them are not even for short bursts. Additionally, we have to factor in the amount of heat generated by the engine under the hood of the vehicle. I don't have numbers offhand what that is in terms of temperature, but I know Whenever I'm servicing my car, it is very, very hot under there, and it is definitely not proper environment to place a lithium iron phosphate battery. If you're going to subject a battery to such extreme heat, the battery needs to be uh, somehow insulated, have a heat shield, something like that, just to, to keep that, that engine heat off of the battery, or preferably in a separate compartment away from your engine and your engine heat. And in most standard automobiles, the battery is mounted right next to the engine, so that's a problem there as well. Now let's say you ignore all that and you try it anyway, uh, your engine starts and your BMS is still good and you're not worried about heat. What happens next? If you live in a climate where you're subject to cold weather in the winter, you won't be able to start your car when it's below freezing because as soon as you start that engine, the alternator is going to begin charging these batteries. These batteries cannot be charged below freezing or you will permanently damage the lithium iron phosphate batteries. Additionally, the alternator and the regulating circuits in cars are designed to charge lead acid batteries, not lithium iron phosphate batteries. Typically, your alternator is gonna be around 14.7 volts. It could reach as high as 15 volts. And if you divide that out by four cells, that's actually above 3.65 volts per cell. 14.7 uh, is around 3.67 volts per cell, I believe, when I calculated it earlier today. So you run the risk of the BMS shutting the battery down from overvoltage of the battery as a whole or overvoltage of any specific cell in that battery, even if your cells are 100% perfectly balanced. So what happens if your battery shuts down while the engine is running? Now, I know this is the one single fact that is probably going to be disputed, but you should never disconnect a battery from your vehicle while the engine is running. I'm sure there are going to be people out there that say whatever, they've done it many times, they, do, they test their alternator that way, etc, etc. Problem is, as soon as this battery shuts off, or as soon as you remove one of the cables from the battery, you're going to see an instantaneous spike on your electrical system from the alternator before it catches up with the fact there's no battery installed. Even if it only lasts for a few milliseconds, can be detrimental to your computer systems, your sensors, any electrical circuit in your vehicle. The most at risk for damage from voltage spikes is going to be your ECU or your engine control unit. And that's the small computer often under your dashboard or back in that area, um, which gathers data from all those sensors and pretty much manages the entire computer of your vehicle. That ECU can be anywhere from a couple hundred to a couple thousand dollars to replace depending on your year, make, and model of your vehicle. Now there are a number of lithium iron phosphate batteries on the market designed as starter batteries. They're built specifically for that purpose. But those are typically aimed towards motorcycles, ATVs, smaller equipment like that. They're not designed to be a replacement to your automobile battery. I have an example of some in front of me here. I purchased these from Battery Hookup, I don't know, it was about a year or two ago. It was a 
Actually, not a very good deal because none of the batteries worked, but they're good for learning and for uh, demonstration purposes. So you can see on the front of this battery, uh, hopefully you can see, it says Power Sports Starter Battery. This battery is designed to start a motorcycle or similar vehicle. And these are all designed the same way. And one key giveaway is also that they will give a rating in CCA or cold crank amps instead of your typical battery like these, which give their rating in AH or amp hours. Cold crank amps is a rating given to batteries intended to start vehicles. And cold crank amps are defined as the amount of current a battery can produce for 30 seconds at zero degrees Fahrenheit without the voltage of the battery dropping below 7.2 volts. If we look at this one here, we can see the cold crank amp rating on this one is 210. So what makes these batteries so special that these can start engines and these cannot? These starter batteries are typically built out of pouch prismatic cells. They're not built out of aluminum cased, plastic cased, anything like that. Cylindrical, sometimes I have seen some with cylindrical cells. They don't have a full BMS. They typically just have a balancing circuit and uh, that balancing circuit has no way of shutting that battery off. I have a few examples of batteries here which I've opened up to show you how they're built. And this battery is a Scorpion Stinger model number SSB12. It looks like QFP. There might be a letter in between there. I'm not sure. So we'll see in here. It's a pack of lithium iron phosphate pouch cells just strapped together there with heat shrink. We see the main negative wire comes straight up to the negative terminal. The main positive wire comes straight up to the positive terminal. We do see there's a balancing circuit in here. And if we get a closer look at this, we can see the resistors that are used for balancing and the small transistors that turn those resistors on and off. But there are no FET transistors that control the negative or the positive, typically the negative, on this battery. So all this does is balance. It doesn't do anything else. There's no low temperature charge protection. There's no over under voltage or anything in this battery. It's that simple. Uh, here's another one. This is uh, battery tender 12 volts. But here you can see it's rated at 210 amps. That's LCA, that's a bit different than CCA. Same design in here, lithium iron phosphate pouch cells. Main negative goes to the negative terminal, main positive goes to the positive terminal. And again, we have a very simple balance board. And you can see the result of how this battery has been used over time. Because there's no protection, uh, the battery has swollen and expanded, uh, likely due to either abuse or undervolting, if I had to guess. And you can see there's a pretty big imprint there where it actually pressed into the connector for the uh, balance board. This is a Bike Master specifically for motorcycles and other specialty vehicles. It's rated for 250 cold cranking amps. And you can see this one actually does have cylindrical cells. I was a little surprised when I opened this one. Uh, so it's a 2P4S configuration here. That is two cells in parallel and then four groupings in series. Again, same as before, the main negative to the terminal, main positive to the terminal and then simply a balance board up here to balance out the cells. Now there are some batteries on the market claimed to be made for cars or larger vehicles if you shop around. Here's one that we had tested earlier. This is a Lilied brand and this is model S110. This one claims to be designed for both deep cycle use and engine starting. This one still has the BMS inside where you can see the uh, main negative goes through the BMS and out to the negative posts. So while they claim this can handle up to 800 amps for starting, uh, that BMS is only rated at 150 amps. Additionally, this was built with aluminum case cells, and we had found that the cells were not rated to push 800 amps even for a short burst. Furthermore, they had removed certain safety features from this BMS, such as the low temperature charge protection, to prevent it from shutting down in cold weather. And that's great, so the battery still works in cold weather, but now you ruin your battery when you start your engine and it begins getting charged. So I don't know why that was removed, but that's outside the scope of this video. Additionally, I don't recommend this battery because this company was a little dishonest with the actual capacity of the battery itself. But yeah, there are others out there if you go around look on Amazon. I haven't personally found a properly rated lithium iron phosphate battery that is designed for use in an automobile. Now I should be clear in all this too that I'm specifically talking about use in a car. I'm not familiar with marine requirements, boats, or anything like that that may require starting batteries. Now, I'm sure there are going to be some people out there who watch this video and they're like, well, dude, I've got a lithium iron phosphate battery in my car and it's been running fine since I did this and this and this. And, you know, that's fantastic. That's wonderful. I'm glad it's working for you. Feel free to describe in the comment section exactly how you solved some of these challenges. Um, I personally am not going to put my vehicle at risk and I don't recommend you guys do the same either. Now maybe if you were to pair your battery with like some super capacitors or just some such that if your battery shuts off you still have the super capacitors in there to help with electrical spikes and your alternator and whatnot. That may work but again you still have the heating issue and uh, it's just not worth it. It's not worth risking and damaging your vehicle. Uh, so these are my opinions on the topic. If you feel you disagree feel free to explain in the comment section below. Any questions or comments, you can ask those as well. Hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.